The 2005 film King Kong. This is a movie that I never really liked all that much over the years. Now don't get me wrong, this is not a terrible movie, but there are some issues to have with this film that keeps it from being better, in my opinion. Directed by Peter Jackson, this is the second remake in the King Kong franchise. And the story is, it takes place in 1933, and ambitious filmmaker, he courses his cast and crew to head to the mysterious Skull Island, where they encounter prehistoric creatures and of course the gorilla known as Khan. Man, I have to say, as far as the story goes, the story could have been a little bit better. Now don't get me wrong, the story's not bad, but there are certain moments in this film that kind of drags on for a long time. And speaking of which, this movie is over three hours long, and I was asking why. Why did this movie have to be longer? I felt like they would have cut out 25 minutes, maybe an hour of the film, then this movie would have been better in my opinion. Still though, I do like the cast in this film. Everybody did a good job with their roles. And as far as King Kong was concerned, he was an interesting ape. You know, the connections between him and Anne played by Naomi Watts. It was actually done real well in this movie, especially since that's like the main plot of this film. Not only did this film win four Academy Awards, but to a lot of people, this is actually one of the best films that they've probably seen. Now, to me personally, this movie could have been so much better. Having this long runtime that it has, it kind of felt like I wish they would have gotten to an island sooner. Why did we have to wait more than hours to see King Kong? These are the issues I mainly had with this movie. Nonetheless, though, at the end of the day, this is a film that is still alright in my opinion. It's just a movie that... I won't go back to rewatch anytime soon. The acting in this film is actually really good. Jack Black, who plays Carl Denham, he is a filmmaker. He wants to go to Skull Island to see if the legend of Kong is true. And when he finds out it is, they kidnap Kong and, well, they take him back to New York City. Adrian Brody, who had played Jack Driscoll, he did a good job as well. So because he's a screenwriter, who falls in love for Anne. And not only that though, but Andy Serkis actually did the motion capture for Kong. And I have to say that was real impressive. See, Kong in this film, he looks like he could have been an actual thing. The relationship between King Kong and Anne is beautiful to see. The visuals in this film are great. I love the music. And you know, this is one of those epic tales. I personally don't like this version of King Kong. The reason being is that I never could enjoy this film to a full extent. Not just because of its long run time, but it takes them a long time to get to point A to point B. And not just that though, this version of King Kong is by far one of the smallest King Kongs there is. There are other larger King Kongs in film in the past and all that. I mean, he's not the smallest, but I kind of wish Peter Jackson made this version of King Kong much bigger. And not just that, though, but the action scenes in this film are just great. That scene where they're fighting all the bugs, that is quite literally just haunting because of how large the bugs is in that scene. And then everything else that goes down, it's like, wow, the action in this scene is just downright great. But still, though, at the end of the day, while I didn't particularly like this version of King Kong, if you never see it, check it out because you might enjoy this film more than I did. I'm giving this film a 6 out of 10. And don't get me wrong, the story is not bad. But there are issues within the script that spend too much time at one place to keep me from ranking this any higher. Still, though, the acting's great. The music is just wonderful. And the connections between King Kong and Anne is definitely a film you gotta look at at least once. Yeah, this film ain't perfect. It does have issues. And it's way too long. It should have been two and a half hours. But this is a movie that I will recommend you check out. Because it's quite thrilling to say the least. And Peter Jackson is a great director in my opinion. And that's my review of the 2005 movie King Kong. Alright, leave your comments down below in the section and let me know what you think about this film.
Okay, this is Slim Guy 172 saying peace out.